Round four of Blackstone Fortress. So far we've done two exploration cards. We uh, started with Masterful Agility and then had some combat. So we're on to the third one now. The state of our explorers uh, is that everyone's fine. Pius Vorn is even in spot. It has one inspiration point. Amelin has two severe, what are they, grievous wounds. So that's that's the danger. They're on the maglev, in the maglev chamber right now. And here's the exploration deck. There are, of course, we started with eight cards in exploration. So there's just the six left. Just the six left. For, uh, I guess since I've had one challenge and one combat, we have three challenges and three combats. So let's find out what we're doing today. Oh, actually, a little bit of a mixture. This is a challenge. This is an ambush. Shadow ambush. Shadow ambush. The explorers split up to search a chamber and are suddenly attacked from the shadows by a group of Urghuls. Place the miniatures for the explorers in a row. Place an Urghul beside each explorer. In leader order, each explorer takes one weapon action using it to attack the Urghuls beside them, as if they were adjacent and visible to the explorer. Then each Urghul that has not been slain makes an attack with their claws and talons against the explorer they are beside. Keep on attacking like this, first with the explorers, then with the Urghuls. If an explorer has slain an Urghul beside them, they can use their weapon attack to attack an Urghul that is beside another explorer, as if the the Urgul were adjacent to them. If an explorer is taken out of action, the Urgul attacking them returns to the shadows and is removed. Continue fighting in this way until either all of the Urguls are slain or have returned to the shadows or all of the explorers are out of action. So that's the setup. This is a weird challenge. I, I have a hard time with this one. It's definitely my least favorite. Uh, but I'm also just... I'm not... 100% sure about about the intent of this one. I mean, I think the intent is straight out of like dungeon mastering for for Pathfinder, D&D, whatever. Um I think the intent is soaking up health points. You know, you're just you're just weakening your your players. Now, I'm I'm using this for visual effect. There's no strategy to this to this. So, yes, I'm putting them on hexes, but that's just for visuals. So each explorer gets an Urghul next to them, and then they're just going to have a series of roll offs to see who can finally die first. Uh, and it, it's not going to be, it's going to be, it's going to get pretty ugly, to be honest. I, I've done this a couple of times, this challenge, and it's, it is very frequently, um, it, it's sort of a, a bloodbath. So, uh, let's put the dice somewhere. Put it there, okay. So, first Janus Drake, he's got an, his, his default attack, and this is, the, this is part of the challenge that I get confused with, because it says a weapon attack. I mean, it doesn't say a specific weapon attack, it just says a weapon attack. So does that mean that he could, for instance, do a flurry of attacks? Which would normally require a 4 or a 6 activation die, but there are no activation die. So do I get to just do those? Do I just get to assume that? It says a weapon attack. So on the one hand, I think, well, I should just do a pistol or a rapier attack with 1d8 as usual. But, I mean, since it says a weapon attack, Janus does have a flurry of attacks. When taking a flurry of attack weapon action... Janus Drake can attack twice for the cost of 4 plus or 3 times for a cost of a 6 plus. Carry out each attack one at a time, one after the other. The target chosen for the second or third attack doesn't have to be the same. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, rules as written. It says a weapon attack. It doesn't say which one. So, I guess Janus can do a flurry of attacks as if though he had a 6 on an activation dice. Uh, that's too critical. <laughs> maybe, maybe I'll leave it at that. Okay, so he's killed his ghoul. Does he get inspired from that kill? 
He needs to roll a one. He does not roll a one. Or a one or a two, but he, that, neither of those. Okay, so that was his attack. Now, once again, like I'm kind of assuming that because it's not specific about the attack, I'm assuming that I can just choose, literally, any weapon attack on their character card. This is Taddeus the Purifier. He has that Power Maw for a D12, but he's also, he's also got a... Oh, actually, that's, that, that's really his best, that's his best option. So he's got one D12 to fight off this ghoul. Gets a hit. It's not the worst thing in the world. So he'll add a wound token to that ghoul. But that's all he gets to do this round, because he doesn't have any special, any special melee tricks. I mean, he's got that servo stubber over here, but that's not relevant at one hex away. Now, Pius. Pius Vorn. I don't think of her as a melee fighter as well, or uh, either, but uh, she does have... She's got that Vindicator Chain Blade for a 4+, plus, which gives her access to a D12. And if she, she, if she doesn't use that, then she's stuck with a, a, D, a D6 uh, for a, a little little spot of fire. So I guess I'm just going to say she's using her chain blade. I mean, that makes sense under the circumstances. It's just, oh, she misses. It's just weird because I feel like I should have to pay activation dice for that. And then uh, Amelin doesn't have anything particularly special either. She's just got her power blade, which is 2d8. Two hits, meaning this ghoul is dead. Does she get inspired by that? She's going to need to roll a 1 or a 2. She rolls a 9. So, no, she is not inspired by that kill. Okay, so this is good because that means these, it, it's basically two on one now because Janus can now help with that ghoul. Amelin can mo help with that ghoul. But before that happens, uh, the ghouls need to take their turns. And the ghouls, just like the explorers, uh, or some of the explorers, have special special rules for their attacks. Specifically, they've got that I mean, they're taking a Talon and Claw attack, and that means that they don't just hit once. They 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 roll three times. I only have two of the 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 hit dice, so I'll um I'll roll. Well, nobody's gonna roll against Janus, so this is against Taddeus. Once that's one miss, and two criticals. Okay, that's not great, but. One thing I forgot to do during the previous combat uh, is to make defense rolls. And a defense roll allows the explorer... Enemies don't make defense rolls. Explorers do. They get to roll a defense die, which in Taddeus' case is a d8, to try to either mitigate or negate the, the, the hits. So he, should, he, he may be getting two grievous wounds. We'll see what happens. Okay, so a single success causes a, a critical, a, a grievous wound to be downgraded to a, just a standard wound, which is a lot better. So he'll, he'll gain one wound on his card, and then this is for the other hit. That's a critical, that just negates. So he just took one wound from that. That's really, really good. All right, now we got a ghoul against Pius Vorn. So one critical, potentially, and three criticals. Wow, that's bad. Okay, so she needs to roll her defense. Unfortunately, her defense is just a d12. And that's the possibly the best thing that could have just happened. So she just negated one of the criticals. <laughs> that's... Amazing. So she's negated two criticals now. Uh, this never happens on a d6. Let's hope for the best. No. Okay. So she did get... Uh, I don't remember what she got. Did she get a critical? Or did it roll three criticals against her? Okay, I don't know. I don't remember. I'll have to review the, the footage to to verify just how bad the damage is. But she's either got a critical or, or a wound. I feel like it was three criticals. 
and that was that was all of the that was the the ghouls' turns. So now the explorers get to go again, and the explorers without a ghoul in front of them just get to move up to the existing ghouls and help out. So we'll we'll attack this ghoul together. We'll have uh, Janus do his. No, actually, because he's gonna he's gonna have three attacks, right? Okay, a critical. All right, so that killed that ghoul. Is he inspired by that? Probably not. He needs to roll a one or a two. He rolled a one, so he is inspired by that. That's cool. So he gets a little inspiration token. And now we've got Amal. Well, we got Pius and Amalin against this thing. So Pius can use her chain blade D twelve. And the uh, Amalin will use her power blade d8s, and they do three misses. Amazing! Wow. Okay. All right. So now it's the ghoul's turn again. <laughs> Two misses. That's. I will. T three misses. I will take it. I will take that, or Pius will anyway. Uh, that's amazing. So that's what something like five misses in a row. That's just crazy. Um. Okay, so now it's all the explorers against this one ghoul. And from experience, I know that that doesn't mean anything. It could just, it, it doesn't mean anything at all. It could, everyone could miss. So let's see if Janus, uh, we'll just go, you know, in order. Janus first. Critical. Okay, so he killed the ghoul. That's not bad. So the explorers are a little worse for the wear. Amelin still has two Grievous. Tadius has a wound, and Pius has uh, either a wound or a grievous wound. I don't remember which, but I'll, I will look at the footage and correct it if I'm wrong. But I, I believe this is correct. They're a little bit worse off, but not as bad as it could be. Would have been a lot better if 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 they hadn't like rolled three misses in a row on that one turn. But that's it. That's the that's the challenge, and we have now completed the challenge. So what's their next challenge going to be? Well, we will have to just wait until the next video to find out. Thanks for watching.